Okay, everyone, welcome back to the Black Carnivore Podcast. I'm really excited to bring today's uh, guest. Um, his name is Tariq, and he is a uh, active and popular member in the um, Black Carnivore Facebook group, and has had amazing, amazing success on the Black Carniv well on the Carnivore Diet. And um, I'm really just excited to hear his story and to share, you know, his tips for success. And um, and hopefully that will help inspire you. And if you have somebody in your life who is uh, on the brink or thinking about this, this might be the video to send them to let them know that this is a great way to eat and uh, and really can change your life. So without further ado, let's dive right in. So Tariq, tell me what happened. How did you how did you find carnivore? Why did you? Were you you know, were you sick or did you just think, oh, I like meat? Um, well, at the time when I found carnivore, um, I was looking for a different style of eating. Um, I was currently at the time had been doing keto and I wasn't as consistent with it as I should have been. But um, being on the road as a truck driver, I found it to be a bit of a struggle to uh, keep up with doing keto. And I also uh, reached plateaus at different times of doing keto. Um, so um, I looked on YouTube and I was just, you know, doing some research. I know I had did uh, plant-based before and uh, I was just looking for something different. And um, I just happened upon, you know, the carnivore diet. I know I watched uh, Dr. Ken Berry. I used to watch a lot of his videos. And uh, I think that's what really kind of convinced me to, to do it because he talked about being able to reverse kidney disease and um, you know um, and I have kidney disease so that was very important for me to be able to see my kidney function improve which I have um, since Excellent. doing the carnival diet and then from watching Dr. Ken Berry uh, I ended up happening uh, to, to see your videos and I really liked your channel and I liked how you were teaching the black community about the carnivore diet and it was something I had really hadn't heard of before. I didn't know that you could just eat, you know, mostly meat and a little vegetables and, you know, be able to uh, lose weight and, and be healthy. So, uh, yeah, that was uh, that was definitely amazing to, uh, to discover that. So. Well, that's, uh, that's great. So I have um, a ton of questions uh, already. <laughs> um, but one, I think the, the thing that is most interesting is how, um, you know, how do you deal with uh, eating on the road? So I don't, you know, I don't know what your schedule is like, but I assume you might be away from home for days. So like, how did you, how did you, I mean, certainly while you were plant-based, I, I don't know if you even went raw vegan, like how did you do it from that angle? And then how do you do it from the carnivore side? Um, well, when I was doing a uh, vegan, yeah, I did kind of, try to do raw vegan a little bit. Um, mm -hmm. I had discovered some videos about that and went down that path a little bit. Um, <laughs> uh, that was gonna be very challenging to, to keep being able to do that. Um, so I, I kind of stuck more to, uh, you know, the, the cooked uh, plant-based um, diet. But I just noticed a lot of the food that I was eating it wasn't good for me. It was plant-based, but it had a lot of preservatives and, and other things. And, uh, you know, trying to do plant-based and being on the road, that became kind of difficult because, you know, trying to keep your vegetables fresh and sometimes your refrigerator and your truck may break down and we were using coolers with ice and stuff was getting getting wet. So that, that, that became uh, kind of challenging. Um, but, um, yeah, I, uh, I just found, I didn't find a lot of variety and I had to eat a lot of vegetables in order to stay full. And that was one of the, the biggest challenges, you know, um, and me and my wife were both a truck driver. I mean, this might road. be indelicate, but when you're eating a lot of vegetables that requires a lot of bathroom trips and if you're trucking, I would assume like that doesn't work. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, you're right about that. Especially because me and my wife were both uh, team truck drivers. And so um, I would drive for 10, 11 hours. Uh, we would then switch over and then she would drive 10, 11 hours. And then with the job that we had, we couldn't stop for the first two hours 
of, of each one of our pickups. Um, so yeah, that was that was kind of challenging to, um, to, <laughs> to bet. do that diet and 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 the frequent trips to the grocery store. You know, to be able to keep enough vegetables in order to, you know, keep uh, be able to keep uh, to to keep enough food in the truck. Um, it, it it was very challenging uh, with uh, not being able to just take the truck to the grocery store anytime we wanted to. So. Uh, yeah, it was, uh, we, my, my wife, she was kind of eating, you know, uh, a little bit plant-based and, and, and probably still some meat, but we both kind of were trying to go towards more of a plant-based diet, but it's just, it wasn't keeping us full enough, so. Yeah. So then you, so then you switched to carnivore and I want to hear all about like how you do it and what that looks like, but just the logistics of doing that on the road like how do you make that work um well we don't drive trucks anymore we we quit our trucking job in february but um i would say i did carnivore probably i'd say about three to four months while being on the road so the last three to three to four months of being on the road is when i started doing carnivore um and when i did i found it to be a lot easier you know, um, I was cooking steaks at home, like four to five days worth of steaks. Um, and sometimes switching it up, like maybe two or three days of steaks and, you know, two or three days of other meats. But I just found it to be a lot easier because I could take a piece of steak and eat the steak and eat that while driving. And I wouldn't have to worry about, you know, having to have like a full plate of vegetables and everything else. Like, you know, so I just, I found uh, carnivore to be a lot easier on the road. And, mm -hmm. you know, I didn't have to worry about the vegetables going bad. You know. So you were saying that you were eating, um, you were able to easily eat a steak on the road and that wasn't hard and while you were driving. Now, mm -hmm. I'm just trying to picture this. You said while you were driving. So you're not telling me you're eating a steak one handed while you're driving or do you just mean when you're out on the road? Well, I, I used to cook the steaks, so I made them tender enough to where they were, um, I could, you could hold it in my hand and just bite off of it while I was there. I actually did that. One hand on the wheel, one hand on the, on the steak. I would suggest, yeah. you know, doing that, but that's, you know, because of the way our job was, it was very time sensitive. You know, we had to do whatever it takes to, to stay exactly. on the road and to, uh, you know, drive a lot of hours, so. Yeah. Okay. So, um, and let, let's go back to the beginning. You said you had kidney disease. Uh, is, is that from like, uh, you know, congenital or did you have like diabetes or what? Do you mind sharing? Uh, yes. Um, well, I still have the kidney disease, but it has significant, significantly gotten better um, since doing the carnivore diet. But I've had it for 13 years. Um, it's a mild kidney disease. It's called focal glomerosclerosis. It's a long name, but uh, yeah, I've had it for 13 years. And for the entire time I've, I've had the, the kidney disease, it has never gotten better except for the last six months um, that I've been to my kidney doctor. Um, he said, what are you doing? Because like the last two blood tests, my kidney disease has gotten, it's starting to reverse. And he was like, this has never, this has never happened for, for me, you know? So, um, and, and he said, and I also told him that I lost the 45 pounds. Uh, I told my doctor I lost the 45 pounds in four months. He said like, what are you doing? So I said, I told him about the carnivore diet. And he was like, so you are eating some vegetables, right? I said, yeah, I'm eating some minimal vegetables, you know, but I know how doctors are, they're gonna, you know, try to get yeah. you to eat other ways that are more traditional. But, uh, yeah. you know, the, the Connor, he was like, hey, man, whatever you're doing, keep doing it. You know, so <laughs> I just told him, hey, you know, I'll uh, I'll keep you updated with my progress. But I, I, I know for a fact that I'm going to be able to reverse my kidney disease with uh, the carnivore diet because I've seen other people be able to do it. So excellent. So you, wait, you have, you have you seen other people with your kidney disease on carnivore who've been able to reverse it or you're just confident that it will it will help that way? Well, because my kidney disease is a mild kidney disease, um, I, I feel like it I feel like I can fully reverse it. 
Um, and I've heard of people that had, you know, through YouTube, through watching Ken Berry's uh, YouTube channel, um, I, I I saw that there were people who had even worse kidney diseases who were able to uh, reverse theirs. So with mine, I only had 5% deterioration to my kidneys. Um, and that's kind of where it's been at for like the last 13 years, um, except for like the last six months, it's, it's getting better. So um yeah so and, and well, also i i have great faith that, oh another thing i'm sorry that i was a borderline diabetic as well um uh, and, and i've and i've been that way for like a few years and so i'm no longer borderline diabetic yes congratulations <laughs> wow that is amazing so in addition to 45 pounds lost improved kidney function on your way to reversing the disease altogether and reversing diabetes. So that's, that's a pretty big win. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. I still got a long way to go, but you know, I'm, I'm going to no, 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 no. Don't undercut my compliment. That's a big win. Yeah. Thank you. Full thank stop. You. That's a big win. That's amazing. So, um, with the, uh, so with the kidney disease, your doctor is now, you know, skeptical, but seeing success so just doesn't want to mess with it yeah he said keep keep going so i mean he didn't even have to tell me because i was already going to keep going anyway because I, yeah. I just know what it's done for so many other people so um yeah i was gonna do it regardless because a yeah. lot of doctors are going to be skeptical because it's not the traditional diet you know i wasn't i never knew about the carnivore diet until last year never so I've tried different diets, heard about different diets, but you know, for me, I just, once I heard about being able to reverse the kidney disease and I knew that it was a diet that I could do easily because of, it was it was food, mostly food that I was already eating, meat, eggs and cheese. I just had to kind of minimize the vegetables, cut out the carbs and the sugar. So I'm like, I can do that, you know? And, mm -hmm. and I'm doing it, so. Yeah, absolutely. So were you on medication for the kidney disease or was it, you, you know, you were just sort of monitoring it over the years? No, I've been on um, lisinopril, five milligrams. Um, I've been taking that uh, for 13 years. So I still take it, you know, and I'm probably going to continue to take it until I know like my kidney disease is gone just to, to make sure. But mm -hmm. like I said, it's, it's so mild to where I don't have any kidney issues. I, you know, it's been at the same level the entire time. It's been mild. I've never had any dialysis or it's never been severe. I don't have any symptoms from it, you know, mm -hmm. um, but yeah. So you're, you will probably start talking about get you know, getting off that medication soon. That's so that's yeah. exciting. Yeah. 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 That's the next step. Yeah. I'm definitely going to yeah. bounce back. <laughs> Three yeah. years, I'll be free from the bondage of medication. So that's the only medication I take right now. Yeah. Um, I work on high blood pressure medicines. I did have high blood pressure one time, you know, and then I didn't like that medication, but I did have to take it for a while. Um, and, and I was able to, now I, I was able to stop. I was able to get off the blood pressure medicine before carnivore because I was already like cutting out the carbs and the sugars due to being on keto and plant based. So, uh, so yeah. that's great. Yeah. yeah. So tell me, um, what does your carnivore look like? I mean, when you first started, how did you do it? And are you doing things differently now? Um, when I first started it, well, yeah, actually, I, when I, did you first start? It was it January or earlier than that? Um, okay. So I started, I would say September of last year. So yeah, September of last year is, is, is when I started carnivore and I kind of like, was just sticking my toe in the water at, at first, you know? Because people, when I was telling when I was telling people about it, they were like, "Man, you can't, you gonna die. You can't, you can't go and just." You can't tell people crazy. about it. <laughs> yeah, and so I'm gonna tell you, it did mess with me a little bit because I'm like, "Man, I, I got to you know." And I was watching videos and seeing people have these amazing results, but I was letting, you know, family and friends kind of get in my head, and I'm looking at them and they're obese and they're eating all these carbs and they're sick. And they, you know, we got all these health issues in our family. And I'm like, okay, am I going to listen to them? 
knowing the family history of all the diseases we've had and all the you know family members that have died from eating the same way and i'm like lord this is my chance to do something different and not only just do it for myself but also do it for my family to show my family that this is how you can eat so we can reverse these generations of bad eating and dying early you know so i'm not just doing this for me i'm doing this for my family and those you know all my loved ones around me yeah so are well are are your loved ones around you starting to reconsider what you're doing or do they still think you're crazy yes, <laughs> yes. no they, they they starting to get it now now i'm getting these questions like okay so tell me more about this coconut diet now you know some of the same people that were telling me oh no that's crazy or you know i i can't change the way i eat this is how i've been eating for a long time like yeah I, i've had family members and friends not come to me like hey tell tell me more so I referred a couple of them to your channel and I'm going to continue to promote your channel um, because I believe that having a, a, a community of people that are on the same path is amazing, especially for us. You know, we need the Black Carnivore channel. This is very important for us to, uh, to have it, to start to establish generational health. And that's the topic that we don't talk about that much, but that's something yeah. I would definitely like to like to promote a lot more now yeah well thank you i really appreciate it and you're absolutely right you know i started this because i didn't see anybody else like me really doing this and i knew we needed this information and uh you know sometimes there are some odd odd corners of the carnivore community places that you don't really want to you know dip your head into so i wanted to make it a little bit more accessible yeah yeah, you're doing yeah. an amazing job too. I, I really thank you. Really thank you. So, how were you doing carnivore in the beginning, and what does it look like today? Like, what did you start out with eating, and then you know, how did that evolve? Um, I started off, man, I started off doing it wrong. Um, still eating carbs, still eating sugars. Um, you know, and and doing doing a lot of uh, a lot of meat, but um, you know, uh, I still liked some fried foods. Mm -hmm. um, I still had a, a a love for that. So, um, I like eating more steak. When I when I was when I knew that I could start to eat more steak, um, that was something that I didn't eat a lot of before the carnivore diet. So, it was it was a uh, a lot of steak. Um, eggs and cheese, um, and, and and like I said, I still was eating, uh, uh, you know, less carbs than before, but still too many carbs to really see the results that I wanted. Because like really, I was going back and forth, losing five pounds, gaining it back, losing five pounds, gaining it back, and that went on from probably like September until like I would say January. Um, and so I say in January is when I really said, I'm going to take, I'm going to start taking this more seriously. And, um, Wait, so, so uh, what, what were the carbs that you were eating too much of between September and January? Um, mac and cheese. Mashed oh, I see. Burgers. So you were having like a little, um, cheats. Yeah. Little cheats, you know, um, definitely for Thanksgiving. <laughs> I didn't eat, yeah. I didn't eat carnivore that much. Um, so yeah, that macaroni and cheese is probably like, was my favorite. Uh, and I, and I, I cook it very well as well. So that, that was one of the, the biggest things I had to let go of as far as carbs goes. Mm -hmm. So, um, so then you, you made it through the holiday season. I mean, honestly, I think if you don't start in September, um, you know, by the time you get to October, it's like, you know, it's too close to the whole holiday season. <laughs> People have a hard time, like, you know, getting up, um, you know, building up like, uh, like some, a track record, you know, to, to uh, fall back on. But you, you got serious in January. So what did that look like? Um, I, I cut out the, definitely cut the carbs significantly. I stopped even eating mac and cheese because what I was telling myself was, okay, just, just get a little bit, you know, just get, just get a little bit. So I just kind of started bringing down the portions. 
you know, I started bringing down the portions of carbs because I know that carbs are addictive. People don't like to acknowledge that. Or some people may not know that carbs are very addictive. So that was that was a challenge for me. So I just started kind of bringing it down more and more and also started being more active, working out more. Um, and, and doing the carnivore allowed me to have that energy to work out more. Um, so as I started working out more, I noticed that the carbs and the sugar were slowing me down. And so that's what caused me to, to cut it down a lot more as far as the carbs and sugars. So you would notice in your workouts a difference between like the days after a cheat versus the days after, a, you know, a good stretch of being carnivore. Yes, yes. It was yeah. a big difference. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, okay. And so, um, so just basically cutting out the cheats was really all that it took, which is generally what it takes. So yeah, that I'm, must have been I'm hard in there. the beginning. Yeah, yeah. I'm, 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 get, I'm getting there. I'm, I'm not 100% there yet. Um, but I'm, I'm, I'm getting there. That, that, that's the path that I'm on is to, you know, totally cut out all the cheat days. Um, so, but I think I'm doing, I think I'm doing a lot better than I, than I was. Yeah. Well, I'm glad, <laughs> very glad. Yeah. So um, do you do a lot of cooking or how do uh, you, know, when you're at home, how are you preparing food? Um, I do a little bit of cooking. My wife mainly does the cooking. So I've had to kind of just teach her a little bit about carnivore and, and the things that I can eat and I, and I can't. And um, that's also kind of caused her to, to cut down on the carbs and sugar as well. Even though she's not doing exactly carnivore, but she has kind of cut down on the carbs and sugars as well since I've been on the carnivore diet. Because I think she sees the, the value in not being, you know, eating all the carbs just to try to, you know, get full. Um, so and she's, she's also doing better as far as her weight loss. Excellent. So. And um, what, what are some of the benefits that you have noticed? I mean, we've heard about the weight loss and your, um, you know, the reversal of your kidney disease, but what, um, are there other things that surprised you? I mean, I know there were a lot of things that I improved on that I wasn't expecting. I didn't think were related to diet or anything. So I wonder if you noticed any of those. Um, yes, definitely. Um, more energy, uh, a better mood. I don't snack as much as I used to. Um, um, I just, I have, I have a lot more energy now. Like I'm able to, now I walk around my neighborhood every morning. Usually I do either a run or a walk or a combination of both. I was going a mile a day and now I'm up to two miles a day. And I do that most mornings. I go running with my dogs shoot a little video post. I know you've probably seen uh, some of that on my Facebook page, but yeah, mm -hmm. I, like, I just like to inspire people to, to think differently and be different and just be themselves. And, and like, you know, if I can lose the weight, I just feel like anybody just got to, you know, you got to want to think differently. You know, you got to want to do something that's, you know, that's maybe weird, you know, or a little crazy, but, you know, it, it's definitely... It can't hurt you. It, it, this this carnivore life, it, 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 it can't hurt you at all. It's, I'm telling you, my life has definitely improved. I mean, you know, um, just mental state, it's, you know, the mental state, you know, the way I deal with problems, um, I just noticed that usually when I was stressed, I would go get some ice cream or I would get something sweet. And um, because I, I have been, you know, consistently losing weight, I know that I have to now deal with my problems in a different way. So now I use walking as a way to de-stress. I go in my, I got a home gym at, at home now. I never had that before. Cause so I just bought a house, me and my wife just bought a house here in Douglasville, Georgia in, in October. So I knew that before we bought this house, I was gonna have a home gym. So now I go in the home gym, I box, I have a boxing bag in there. Um, I do push-ups. I do I skip rope, you know. And, and sometimes I record a little video of my workout and um, and, and post it. And, and that also inspires people. And I, and I have a lot of people around me that are now 
wanted to work out and they're changing their diets, you know, and it's like now, instead of me talking about, you know, me wanting to lose weight and me wanting to be on the carnivore diet and, and I'm in the beginning of it, now I'm kind of, I'm, I've progressed. I've progressed now. And so now, instead of me trying to push it on people, you know, now it's like people are coming to me and say, hey, tell me more. And, and you know, they're, they're inspired by the, the, the video that I do and the things that I, I, I talk about when I talk about, you know, better health and, you know, um, being able to reverse this, you know, these traditions of, you know, people dying too early. I've had a lot of my family members die early like my mom passed when she was 40 years old of uh, obesity and cancer you know yeah uh, and so I've had a lot of other family members they they, they passed away from kidney disease and, and diabetes and and obesity and I just think that you know we, we will watch our family members die and just sit back and, and do the same things that they did for them to have an early death and I just think that you know we need to start taking our health seriously and, and, and start teaching and practicing generational health. Yeah, I, that's such a powerful message. And I, I really appreciate that. And I hope that you'll be starting your YouTube channel soon oh. where, where you're going to inspire carnivore men. Um, I, I really, I enjoy bringing this message, but I know, you know, it's coming from, a, you know, a woman's perspective. And I feel like I have a lot of women on and then there are some men and then the husband of those women who are getting it tangen tangentially, but they might want to hear from, you know, someone like you too. <laughs> you know what, it's funny you mentioned the YouTube channel because I've already started. Oh, excellent. Yeah. What is it? Yeah. Let's see here. Okay. We're going to promote it. Okay, it's a uh, MVMT culture. That's movement culture. Okay. MVMT culture, short for movement. Movement culture on YouTube. Also, same thing. MVMT culture on Instagram, and it's Tariq Gatson on Facebook. And I post videos on all three of those platforms. Excellent, excellent. Oh my gosh! So I'm definitely going to. Um, you know, tag you and look for those uh, videos. And I think I can link your um, channel to um, mine so that other people will, it, it'll get suggested to people who like mine. That's okay. awesome. Yeah, thank you. So, yeah. So can you tell me more about your workout? So you built this home gym and it sounds like you've got a whole bunch of stuff in there. Um, what are some of your fitness goals and what, what have you been able to achieve thus far? And do you have any further goals? Um, well, my gym is very minimalistic because what I saw before was I would go out and buy, I had this, this idea to go out and buy all this equipment, spend thousands of dollars. And I know I bought workout programs before and didn't use them, you know, and bought gym memberships and barely went. So I decided that this time, you know, I had some equipment left over from before we, we bought our house. I said, you know what, I'm going to bring that stuff in. I added like a boxing bag. I already had boxing gloves that I was barely using. So I just kind of like used some of the, I brought in some of the things that I had before that I wasn't using. And instead of like adding a whole bunch of quick equipment that I probably wouldn't use anyway, I decided to keep it more basic. And now I use more of the things that I have instead of trying to go out there and buy more equipment that's just gonna, you know, collect dust. So, um, but yeah, I have a boxing bag, I have boxing gloves. Um, and I have people that come over and, and, and uh, hit the bag with me sometimes. Um, sometimes I'll go to a friend's house that has a boxing bag or has some workout equipment and we'll do workouts together. Um, I just recently, I hosted a pull-up event at the park in Atlanta, um, at Isabel Gates Webster Park uh, in Atlanta. So a few of my friends came. One of my friends is a personal trainer. Um, he came out. His name is Brandon. So we had a good time. Um, him me, him, and my cousin, and some other guys, we uh, we did some pull-ups, you know, um, and, and uh, my, my, my friend, he's a lot more advanced in his uh, fitness, so I kind of let him lead the other guys and uh, show us what to do, but uh, it, was, it was nice. We did some walking around the track, some running around the track, and what I want to do, I, I want, I'm, I'm planning on having more events like that, where, you know, a group of guys and even sometimes women can come 
and hang out and, and, and us all work out together, do calisthenics and just kind of, you know, feed off of each other's energy, you know, because um, mm-hmm. I'm, I'm learning that my, my, my issues before with being consistent with weight loss was due to not having that community. So now yeah. for me, it's like, I have to have the community. I have to have, you know, that, that community behind me and, and so that I can keep going. So I, so I, when I'm having issues or struggling, I have somebody I can reach out to that's on the same path. So I think that <laughs> your platform is, is powerful and, you know, the Facebook group that you have, you know, it, it's amazing. And like when I did my little post about my weight loss, I just had so many people asking me questions and that just made me realize like, you know what? I should be teaching this to people. You know, mm-hmm. it just it just made me feel good that it went from people telling me that I was crazy to like now they're asking me questions and they're wanting to learn and they're wanting to, you know, they they also in the beginning of of, of the black of the of the carnivore diet or they're um, doing something else and they just want they wanna they wanna see some progress and they wanna be consistent and the carnivore diet mm-hmm. will get you there. Yeah. Wow, that's awesome. So you're a real organizer type. You're the one who's like, come on, guys, let's do this. I come up yeah. with this whole plan. Let's do it. Yeah, that, that's so a, that's I, I want to know how many pull ups did you do, though? <laughs> <laughs> well, I could do zero. So there you go. <laughs> no, I, I mean, I'm gonna tell you, I, I did about 10. I did Excellent. About 10. I did about 10 and I did some um, incline, uh, incline bar pushups. I can't say how many of those I did, but uh, I know I did at least 10 pull-ups. Not, not consecutively, I'm not at that level yet, but um, I was able to do 10, you know, with some small breaks in between. Um, well, so. I mean, that's really, I mean, that's amazing. And so what would you say is like your next goal, um, you know, fitness wise? My next goal, fitness-wise, uh, be able to get more into calisthenics. Be able to get more into calisthenics because um, I enjoy going to the park. It's just something about being outside. Like I enjoy my home gym, but it's just something about being outside in the sun and 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 being able to work out and just enjoying the the, the scenery and and being out there with with, with people. And um, I just I love that. So I think. Uh, I would like to progress more with calisthenics, have more of the pull-up events that, that I hosted, um, and just uh, invite more, more people out and just uh, make it a consistent a consistent uh, thing that I do, you know. So, like, the next time I come down to Georgia, I'm going to come by this park and find you doing, like, one-handed, you know, uh, push-ups <laughs> from a headstand. <laughs> or on a handstand like you're yeah. gonna get to be like those guys that's pretty awesome yeah that, that that's that's what i would like to be yeah definitely yeah. So, yeah so you've built quite a community i think that's really important so you know what would you say um like what would you say to people on how to uh you know how to get started and how to stay motivated you said building a community but what else what do people need to know um research just you know look 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 up carnivore you know on on youtube check out your channel black carnivore um and and check out your facebook page black carnivore on facebook um and then just just do the research and and look at the results that that people are getting i would i would say that and and i would say um just reaching out to people like I'm gonna tell you that was my biggest struggle when I was trying to do it all alone so I would say like you know reach out to people that are in the carnival community you know ask questions um, you know join groups you know um, be, be, be consistent you know and the thing is with, 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 with carnivore even if you don't have a even if you don't work out a whole lot you can still see the weight loss. Like I wasn't consistent with working out like that in the beginning, you know, um, but it was mainly the diet. And the thing is, a lot of people, they they go and they try to, you know, work out really hard. Then they want to go eat all this carb, all these carbs and sugar. And it's like you're never going to get there. Even if you do see some some progress, you'll end up reversing that progress. 
So it's just it's 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 all about being being consistent and 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 you can't work outwork a bad diet. You just can't. Yeah, truer words never spoken. I I totally agree with that. And yeah, I could totally out eat anything I could work out. You know, it doesn't take but a few Oreos <laughs> to, yeah, yeah. to wipe out that hour. Mm -hmm. So um, so what would you say? Like, how do we reach out more to um, you know the black community and kind of change the way people think? Because I know, you know, I so many of us have been taught, you know, that um processed foods are not that bad sugar is no big deal just brush your teeth you know and limit how much you have if you're overweight uh, i think that we're like pushing up against a lot of misinformation that's just like just flat out not true so how do you what, what do you think i mean certainly you and i are leading by example and that you know allows people to come to us but eventually we gotta you know dive in there i mean you, you must have I don't know. What are your thoughts? Um, just have have more have more promotion. Um, have 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 um, promote the carnivore diet on on more platforms. Um, have you know in person meetups with people. You know because that's one of the things too. I'm going to be talking to people about when we have these meetups. Is you know what are you eating? So it's like. If, 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 if I, if I'm leading by example, you know, that, that means that I'm also being able to teach what I'm doing. And, you know, as they see my progress, I'm just going to continue to, to, to teach people. And we just have to, the thing is, you can't force anybody to do anything. And that, that got frustrating for me in the beginning was I was trying to tell everybody about things. And they weren't really believing me because for one, I didn't, I didn't show it in my actions that I was dedicated to my diet. And my weight loss also showed that I wasn't being consistent because I would just go back and forth with my weight loss. And now I've been consistently able to lose weight, you know, over the last few months. And so it's like now they see the consistency. Now they really see the results. And I now when people see me and they haven't seen me in years, the first thing they say is, man, you've lost a lot of weight. And that's something I've never heard on any other diet. I've never been able to hear that, you know. And so that that makes me feel good. So I just think that we just have to continue to promote what we're doing, you know, and, and reach out to people. But it's 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 been our bad eating has been going on for generations so we can't expect that it's going to change overnight we just have to keep continuing to do the work and eventually you know more people will hear about it and more people will want to do it but i mean you can't save everybody that's just the truth yeah and have you found ways to um take traditional foods and sort of make them carnivore healthy and carnivore friendly because, you know, I definitely have my share of people saying, uh, you know, wait, no macaroni and cheese, no potato salad, you know, what, you know, so I have had to kind of look for ways to, you know, make things that are similar to what, you know, what I grew up with, um, but at the same time, you know, sort of fit within uh, carnivore. So what have you done? Um, it's, it's funny you ask that because this is also what I shared in your Facebook group, and that is instead of eating waffles, because I used to love waffles, I now make something called chocolate. And it's basically, it's an egg with cheese, and you put it in the waffle maker, you oil it just like you would, you know, um, a regular waffle, and it comes out looking just like a waffle, and it has that, that texture similar to a waffle. So now um, I have that with a lot of different, you know, meats. And so that gives me that variety. And sometimes I will go, instead of just putting salt, pepper, eggs, and cheese together, I will sometimes add some paprika or other seasoning. I add some onions, you know, kind of jazz it up a little bit. Um, but I, I never get tired of chocolates, you know. And, and, and like I said, because of it being the consistency, a similar consistency of a waffle, it, 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 it keeps me, it, it fills me up. And so um, I do that. Um, 
I do other things like with, with pork rinds, I'll take some pork rinds and, you know, I used to like chips and dip. So I would take some pork rinds. If, if I don't, I try not to snack like that, but um, when I do, instead of having like, you know, chips, I try to stay away from regular chips. So I try to do more of the pork rinds with like some salsa or some sort of dip, you know, um, as a way so I can have something similar to the texture of potato chips, but you know, something that I know is within the carnival diet. Yeah, that's awesome. So I, I have liked um, the uh, pork rinds with like um, liver pate, but I consider that dinner. I mean, it's a snack item, but you know, the way it sits on your stomach, it's kind of like that was dinner <laughs> and that was oh, yeah. nutritious. Oh, wow. That sounds great. I'm going to tell you another one that I do too is um, uh, 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 pork rind nachos. Yeah. <laughs> Instead of the tortilla chips, the pork rinds. They're like the, the crunchy ones, the ones that are um, yeah. like the chicor chicorones, the, um, mm -hmm. the ones that are kind of hard, like the country style, those, because they, mm -hmm. they're very crunchy and hard. And I would, um, you know, uh, dress them up like nachos. And so I, yeah. I enjoy that as well. So that's just, you know, a little something that I do sometimes um, to uh, still have something similar to what I used to eat. So it sounds like you don't feel like you're deprived at all. No, um, even even when I have now steak for me is like the best. You know, having having steak like I'm, I'm I, I never have issues with being full when I eat steak. But when I have like chicken and maybe some pork, sometimes I may still be a little hungry. So what I'll do is when I have like chicken or turkey or something that's not that fatty, I'll add a little bit of leftover fat to it. Um, and usually that works. Now, when I don't have that, chicken doesn't keep me as full. So I have to maybe eat a little more of it than I usually, you know, would. But um, yeah, definitely adding fat to meats that are not already fatty. It, it helps out a lot too. Yeah. I, yeah, I find if I'm going to have chicken, I have to have beef with it. Otherwise, it's just, yeah, it just yeah, doesn't heard, work. Yeah, I've heard you say that. Yeah. yeah. Wow. So that's really awesome. Well, I hope we can do a collab. Can I be on your channel? Oh, yeah, sure, sure, sure. Yeah. I'll do that. Yeah. Yeah. Or yeah, maybe, yeah. I don't know, maybe we can do some kind of workout thing, um, uh, you know, virtually. I go to the park every day as well with my dog. Oh, do? Although, yeah. Uh, what kind of dogs do you have? What kind of dogs? I yeah. have a, I have a, uh, a miniature schnauzer. Um, and we have a Sheltie mixed with a husky. Wow. Yeah. Okay. Big dog. Yeah, so and are, are they like super them. happy that n now you have all this energy to take them running every day? Yes. Let me tell you, whenever I skip a day and don't take them running, they're literally standing at the door all day whining and crying. Like they've gotten so used to these morning runs. It's just like when I don't take them, they have an attitude all day. So <laughs> yeah, yeah. If, if I don't take them, if I don't take them on a run every day, yeah, I, I got problems. Yeah, yeah. Well, and you know, I mean, we can learn some, from, something from that. Like, you know, we should all be, you know, that eager to get some exercise. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. And see, I'm gonna tell you another thing is like now that, cause I used to keep my workouts to myself diet to myself but now I've opened up more and started doing videos telling people what I'm doing posting it and so it's like now I have to I have to keep being consistent because now people know I can't go and say oh I lost all this weight and then the next thing you know a couple of months later I've gained it all back and I'm and I'm not working out anymore so it's like you know I want to continue to inspire people I want to continue to teach people about you know what's working for me you know and it's mm -hmm. not for everybody you know, because some people are just, they're stuck in their ways and they don't want to change. But I just feel like if there's anybody who really wants to, to, to be healthier and to, you know, learn more about the carnivore diet, then I'm willing to teach them, you know, and mm -hmm. I'm also willing to refer them to your channel, you know, as well. Yeah. 
Well, I, you know, I really appreciate that you're adding that piece about the uh, fitness and, and exercise, because I do think it is really important. And while I do want people to know that you can lose weight just by the diet, um, and, and sometimes in the beginning, that may be preferable if you've got a lot of illness or inflammation or you're very heavy, you know, I don't want you like to head out, you know, to the, the track and like try to run a couple of miles when you're carrying a lot of weight, because that could put a lot of stress on your joints. But um, as soon as you're able to and start to feel the desire to, to exercise, I do think it's important to do. And so I'm finally trying to live by my own words and um, I'm getting back into exercise myself and kind of working with someone to help me figure out um, an at-home routine. Cause I, you know, of course, when the gyms closed, like that was off the table and I don't know, I, you know, I, I like being at home. So now I, I would like to figure out how to do some fitness at home or um, in the park. And uh, I see all these people out there, you know, like doing their calisthenics or, you know, yoga or whatever. And I'm kind of like, you know, I need to, I need to spend more time outside, frankly. So, um, you know, that's definitely on my mind, but I'm certainly starting to work out at home now and really enjoying it. Yeah, I think, um, yeah, I think that's great. I think uh, uh, another good idea would be if you see people out at the park, you know, just go up to them and say, hey, you know, can I work out with you? You know, I, I, that's that's what I would do, you know, because I just feel and like- that's an idea know, I had not considered, yeah. but yeah, you're right. Yeah, walk up to them and say, hey, can I, can I work out with you? You know, and, and I think that's powerful. So if you don't have people that, you know, are willing to go to the park with you, you see some people out there, you know, see if you can work out with them. Yeah, I don't, I definitely do not have friends who would go and work out with me, yeah. you know, so excellent. I need to find more friends who like to work out. That's for sure. <laughs> yeah. They're out there. All right. Well, awesome. I am so glad I had this opportunity to talk to you and um, I would love to know, are there any more tips that you, you know, would give to people who are getting started and early on? Um, oh, I didn't ask you about like, you know, the, some of the transition s symptoms, like were, did you have any difficulties in the beginning when you switched to carnivore? How did you get through it? Um, the only difficulty, I, the, I, one of the difficulties I had was um, getting rid of the carb and sugar addiction. Um, mm -hmm. That was that. So you was had a lot of cravings. Things. That was that was one of the biggest things, and you know, like I would say, I would say that was that was the biggest thing. I would say that was the biggest thing was the the uh, the, the, the food addictions that I had, um, and then also like because people are used to seeing me eat a certain thing, going around family and friends and like trying to eat differently, but they got all this food that I'm used to eating and the temptation, oof, the temptation, that was one of the, the hardest things. So yeah, there were, there were some days when I put just meat on my plate and people were looking at me crazy like, huh? Is this really Tariq eating like this? Like it, 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 it just it shocked them. And then you know there were times also when I would go to an event, if there wasn't something in there that I could eat, I wouldn't eat anything. I'm like, you, you okay? You want something to eat? I'm like, no, I'm good. Like you sure? This is what you like? I'm like, no, I'm good. I'm fine. You know, I'm gonna tell you another trick too is, uh, sometimes before I go to an event, I've, I've learned that eat before. Because especially if you're going around people that eat a certain way that you used to eat, most likely they're going to have food there that you can't eat. So instead of being tempted or ending up eating that food, I've learned that eating before an event, it makes it where if they don't have food that I can eat, then I'm good. I could just drink some water, you know. Mm -hmm. So that, that's, that's another tip that's definitely helped me. Yeah. So you've had other family events since the, the holidays. So what what makes you stronger now versus last November and December? I just think consistency and 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 sharing my results. I think that's it. Because it's like now I'm I'm being held accountable by not only people that are around me that see me all the time, but also people you know, on, on, on social media, you know, they're asking me questions and they're asking me for advice. And I'm like, 
you know, I definitely have to keep going with you now because like I'm helping other people. So it's not just about me or just the people that are around me now, you know, I'm, I'm inspiring it and giving advice to people who I don't know. And so that's powerful. So just, you know, a lot of times we keep our, our progress to ourselves, especially when it comes down to health, because we feel like we'll be ridiculed, you know, oh, you're going to die and different things like that. I've heard that before. Um, I just had to kind of slowly say, you know what, this is not for everybody. But there are some people that can be inspired by your story, so you need to share it. And it may sound weird. When I first started doing videos, I was like, oh, no, I just, you know, I kind of was not being consistent with it. But since doing the carnivore diet, I'm like, you know what? This is something people need to really know about. This is something people need to hear about. And, and like I said, just being a part of a community that was also sharing and inspiring and helping. That, that made a tremendous difference. Yeah, yeah. Well, I am very glad to have you in the community. And to everybody watching, I hope that you were inspired by the story. You're going to go to um, MVMT. Um, what was the second part? Culture, culture. C-U-L-T-U-R-E, culture. Right. MVMT yeah. culture. Um, follow him and, uh, you know, and continue to check out my videos and, uh, you know, just get started on carnivore. There's no other way than to just get started. And even if it's sloppy and messy in the beginning, that's, you know, that's just step one and that's it. So, um, I have, uh, enjoyed very much talking to you, Tyreek, and, um, I look Thank forward you. to, uh, you know, collaborating and doing something again in the future and everybody, I will see you all next week. Have a great, great. one. Me too. Thank you, Aiden.